discussion for the day analyze the pros and cons of direct tax proposals presented at the Union Budget 2015. Anil K. Chopra from PhD Chamber, Prakash Chandra from CBDT, Krishnan Malhotra from Amar Chand Mangaldas, H.P. Agarwal from S.S. Kotari Mehta, Rani Singh Nair from CBDT Observations, Pragya Saxena from TPLI Ministry of Finance put forward their points in front of the audience and here are the highlights. Tax deferral or exemption is not available to the sponsors if they are transferring the immovable property. So I need to have an SPV where the property resides. If I am holding property in my name, then certainly in that situation we find that we may not see the benefit. I think these are the two important points as far as GT is concerned. And But whatever they have done it, I think to a great extent it would really uh, uh, give a boost to the real estate. But these two important points which are also equally relevant. Those of you who are involved in foreign taxation would know that the margins which have been provided in safe harbor rules are so high, so unrealistically high that instead of providing any relief to the taxpayers, it virtually amounts to addition being made in almost all the cases of transfer pricing. Now, gentlemen, this is the difference between the tax policy and the tax administration. If you look at the budget, there is always a lot of expectations. I don't know whether it is justified or not. But prior to the budget being formed, everyone has a lot of expectations. And after the budget is passed, or rather presented in Parliament, everyone then analyzes it and feels that whatever was the expectation, we did not meet that level of expectation. If you look at the budget, it's only a statement of intent. It is an accounting statement. But we have expectations from it. And it also sets a roadmap for the year, for the financial year. This time, the finance minister took a turn from in a broader perspective and made it a four-year intent. If you look at the budget from the two parts, Mr. Agarwal also mentioned that there's inconsistencies in terms of a stable tax policy and a non-adversarial tax administration. But I am sure everyone in this house will, uh, will acknowledge that for the past few years, the department has been trying very hard to reduce individual discretion, to reduce the interaction of the taxpayer with the department by going through e-services. And perhaps we are the only department which has transformed itself in the last so many years. The last session for the day was on indirect taxation and was moderated by Bimal Jain from PhD Chamber. Monica Rora from Deloitte, Vinod Kumar from CBEC and Bipin Sapra from Ernst & Young. The debate highlighted major concerns and applauded the well thought of policies by the government. Now my first question is sir, with regard to the custom duty that changes have been made. So after I think five decades, we came to a station where we were having minimum rates. But unfortunately, what we noticed from the budget this year, that the number of rates of duties have increased. And you understand, sir, that if number of rates increases, then definitely litigation increases. So this is the one question which is bothering us. The second is, sir, that you know, you, we must have received the uh, feedback from the industry that the SAD, the SAD is a problematic area, and in fact, we know that government is also not getting out of it. Manufacturers are eligible to take credit, and the traders are eligible to take SAD refund. Now, it means nothing is coming up in the pocket of the government. Then, we requested that why this SAD should not be abolished. But, sir, I think instead of doing small or small changes, and if this SAD would have reduced, I think this will be a relief to the industry. And another thing is this, this will definitely help what the mission is of the government that make in India and manufacture India will progress.
Focus. IDH. Innovate. Enable.